Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am super excited to share with you these adorable Easter projects using the Welcome Easter stamp set. Now this stamp set is so, so cute, but it's not just for Easter. Um, Although it says Welcome Easter, there are some cute little images and an adorable sentiment for making baby cards. So there are lots of possibilities with this one. But today we are all about Easter. Now to find this particular stamp set in the catalog, it is in the January to June mini catalog. You'll find it on page 45 and it's priced at just $27 here in Canada. The best thing about this stamp set is that it includes images and sentiments. So it's kind of your one-stop shop for Easter projects. So I'm going to show you two cards and a cute little treat holder today. So we're going to get started right away with this card. Now I posted this earlier today. I hope you saw it. Um, it is just too cute. This little bunny is just adorable. So we are going to start by stamping that little bunny and doing some coloring with our Stampin' Blends. So I'm just going to pull out all my little bits and bobs here. And we are going to start with just a die cut whisper white circle. Now, just as I'm getting going here, I want to make sure that I pull up my live here so I can see who's watching. There we are. Okay, let's see if anybody's here. Nobody's here yet. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> if you are here, give me a hello or a thumbs up or something so I know you're watching. Okay, so we are going to start with a die cut whisper white circle. This is cut using the layering circles framelits or dies rather, they're not framelits anymore. Um, this is the largest of the plain circles. Okay, so we are going to stamp our cute little bunny in basic gray ink. Now this is one of the classic inks that we can use and color with our stamp and blends. Not all all classic inks can be used. Normally with, with Stampin' Blends we want to use um, Memento black ink. However, our basic gray is one that stands up with the blends. Hi Jen, how are you doing today? I hope you're having a good week. Okay, so we're going to start. We've stamped our little bunny in the basic gray. We're going to start coloring just um, the bottoms of his feet and his ears and his little nose in the dark petal pink. Okay, so I'm just going to add just a little titch of color to the feet. Now I don't need to worry too much about the bottom of the feet because I am going to cover the bottom part with some grass. Oh, we got to do his nose too. Can't forget the little pink nose. And then I'm going to color uh, the bulk of the bunny in the light smoky slate. Okay, I'm not doing too much shading on here. Um, I wasn't, is this light? Yeah, it is. It looks quite dark. <laughs> um, I'm not worrying about shading on this one, mainly because most of the bottom half, which is where most of the shading would be, is going to be covered by die cut grass, which I will show you in a minute. So we're just going to color them in with our Stampin' Blends. Again, this is the light smoky slate. You could certainly leave your bunny white. He would look adorable just in white. But I wanted him to have a little bit more presence on my cards, so I decided to go with gray. We have lots of gray bunnies in our yard these days. They are quite enjoying frolicking in the spring. Hi Nancy, hi Gail, how are you guys doing? Hope you're having a good week. I just realized I colored a bunny toe pink when I shouldn't have. So we're gonna cover that up with some gray. Hopefully that's not too, too off. I don't think it'll be noticeable. And if it is, we'll just cover it with grass. No one will ever know. Right? Right. Okay, so we've colored the bottom. Now, when you're coloring the face, I'm gonna show you just a little tip for how to get a little bit of shading with just one of your Stampin' Blend. So I'm gonna color the ears first. So we'll just quickly fill in around the ears here. Okay, so. When we are coloring um, around the face, I'm going to start and just kind of come in around the edges like this all the way around. So I'm going to dart, go right around his chin and around under his ears and come in around the edges like this. 
okay? So I've laid down one layer of the light. Then I'm gonna come across and again, go across the whole face, obviously avoiding the nose and the teeth because we want his teeth to stay white. We want him to have good dental hygiene, this bunny. But you're going to see that as this blends, that those edges where we lay down that first layer of color are going to be just a tiny bit darker. So that's a way that you can get some shading with only one shade of marker. Okay, so you can see how the edges of the face are a little bit darker. Can you see that? Yeah, hope so. And then you can come and blend that out just a little bit. There we go. Isn't he cute? Oh, he's so adorable. Hi, Lee, how are you doing? Hope you're having a good week. Okay, so next, oh, we're going to stamp our little bumblebee. I almost forgot this cute little bumblebee. I absolutely, I think it's my favorite stamp in this set. So adorable. We're just going to stamp them kind of up in the, the one corner there. I know, I love this set too, Lee. It is so, so cute. I've been having fun all week playing with it. So I'm just taking my dark So Saffron to color in that little bumblebee there. And then we are going to come in with our, did I do any die cut grass? Hmm, I don't think I did. Well then, we are going to improvise. Hold the phone. Sometimes the best laid plans just don't work out the way we want them to. But that's okay. I'm going to show you how to improvise in case you don't have the die that I was using. So I'm going to cut just a strip of... This is from the punch, uh, please just punch DSP pack. Okay. So this is where my grass is going to go here. Okay. Now I used on my original, I'll show you, um, the die that's from the special day, um, dies that cuts the grass right across here. Okay. But I forgot to do that in preparation for this video. So that's okay. We don't need to worry about it. We're going to just fringe some grass instead. And so you can do that by just taking your snips along the edge, ed, sorry, edge of your DSP. And we're just gonna add a little bit of grass all the way across. Okay, and then if you want it to have different layers or levels, you can kind of cut it at a bit of a curve here. And then you bend it a little bit and look at that, we have Instagrass. Nothing like improvising. So we're just gonna go ahead and glue that down. I'm gonna, I don't wanna cover up too much of him. I'm just gonna kinda cover him so he's not floating, okay? Oh my goodness, Debbie. Oh, <laughs> it is way too late in the year for those kinds of temperatures. Oh my Lord, I would, oh. Please don't send it, don't send it east, okay? You can just keep it right there. <laughs> We don't need it here. Yikes. Hi, Connie. How are you? Hope you're doing okay. All right. So we're going to, oh, straight would be better. There we go. Okay. So we've got our little fringe of grass on. Now to get rid of that excess, we're just going to come and flip it over and trim around the bottom edge of our circle. Just like this. And there we have it. Our bunny is sitting in some grass. Isn't he cute? So, so cute. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and glue that onto a die cut pool party scallop circle. So this is cut, again, using the layering circle dies. Uh, and this is the largest scallop, okay? And you're gonna see that the plain one layers perfectly on the scallop. So we'll just throw a little bit of Tombow on the back of that. And we will pop that on there just like that. Okay. Fluff up my grass a little bit. There we go. Isn't he cute? Oh, he's so cute. Okay. We'll set him aside for a minute. Now here I have a piece of Highland Heather cardstock. Oh, you're working on your Easter cards too, are you, Debbie? Well, I figure I better get them in the mail by the end of this week, right? Easter is coming and we're probably not going to be seeing anybody. So I figure I better get my wishes in the mail. Um, I do. I love the, the three Easter sets in the catalog this year too. They are beautiful. Okay, so we have Highland Heather cardstock. It is four by five and a quarter inches. It is embossed using the basket weave embossing folder, which I love for Easter and spring. It reminds me of Easter baskets. 
And then I have a strip. I, this is more of that Please Just Punch GSP. This is available only until today, right? This is part of that coordination product release. So if you haven't picked this paper up yet, you're going to want to get your order in before midnight tonight. Okay, it goes away as of midnight. All right, so we're going to go ahead and glue that onto our embossed panel. This is cut to two by five and a quarter inches. So I'm going to use a little bit of fast fuse. I think I've been rationing my fast fuse because I am getting very near the end and I'm going to, I'm going to have a little, I'm going to have a moment for sure when I use my last roll. Okay. So this is getting glued down about a half inch from the left edge. Okay. And you're going to see that there's a little bit of overhang there. That happens when you emboss with this folder. It shrinks the paper just a teensy bit. So it's not a true five and a quarter inches. It's just a smidge less. But that's what our mini trimmer is for, right? We get rid of that little bit of overhang there. Okay. So next I have a little bit of polka dot twill ribbon. And we're going to add a couple of glue dots to the ends. Oh, no, Debbie, don't tell me it's coming our way. <laughs> oh, I'm not No, 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 I need spring. I need sunshine and warm temperatures. <laughs> oh, I'm going to cry if it gets that cold. Really? Yikes. Okay, let's not think about that. Let's think about springtime and sun and flowers and bunnies. <laughs> okay, so I've just added glue dots on either end of that piece of ribbon, and I've adhered it to my panel. Okay, just centered on the green the green strip there. And then I am going to go ahead and adhere my little bunny with some dimensionals. So I'll just throw a couple of these on the back. And we're gonna pop, what the heck? I just pulled my dimensional right off. <laughs> Did not mean to do that. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. We're going to pop this guy onto the front of our card. Okay. Now he's not going to be centered over that strip. He's going to be centered on the, the larger panel. Okay. And he's going to go right about there. Just like that. Okay. And then we have a little strip of Whisper White. So this is three quarters of an inch wide and I don't know, probably five, five and a half. It's just a scrap. Okay. It's the width that you need to worry about. And we are going to stamp our Happy Easter in that same basic gray ink. So we'll ink that up and we'll stamp that just in the middle of that strip there. Okay. Then we're going to cut our little banner ends. And to do that, we're going to use our little tailored tag trick. So I'm going to slide it in one end and then back it off a little bit and punch. Okay. And then same thing on the other end, slide it in, back it off and punch. And then we got a cute little banner, nice and neat and tidy. Okay, now we have some cute, cute, cute little flowers that are punched using the, what is it called? The Blossom Punch that is in celebration. It's this one right here. Um, it is a level two item available only till today, right? Today, today is when celebration ends. So you can still get this punch for free with a $120 purchase. And it coordinates with that Please This Punch DSP. So I just used that punch to punch out um, some little flowers from the DSP. And we're going to go ahead and adhere them to our sentiment banner here. So I'm going to put a glue dot on one of the little purple guys and he's going to go right there and then we'll add this time the glue dot's going to go on the front no it's not oh oopsie okay it's going to go back here <laughs> then we're going to put the glue dot there did that stick yes it did and that one's going to come down here whoops don't want to cover up my sentiment right about there and then this little purple guy is going to go on top here so when you're gluing these, the easiest way to do it is with glue dots, right? No muss, no fuss, nice and easy. Okay, so this is going to get glued right across the base of my little circle here. I want to make sure I don't cover up the grass because we want to see that. It's cute. Um, so I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals right nestled up close to my circle here. Okay, because that is going to cover where this extends past the circle. And then I'm going to put just a teensy bit of Tombow right there to glue this part to. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this 
Thanks, Nancy. I'm glad you like it. So we're going to just pop that on right about there and center the banner on your card. And again, straight is preferable. Okay. And then we can glue this onto our card base. So here I have a Highland Tether card base. It is cut to five and a half by eight and a half inches and it's scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we're going to fold in half along that score line, crisp it up with our bone folder. And then we're going to add a little bit of adhesive to the back of our embossed panel. And we're going to pop that onto the front of our card. Just like that. Okay. There's my grass. All good. Last couple of touches. We're going to add a cute little polka dot tool bow. So I've already tied this. Again, this was kicking around from another kit from another class. So we're just going to add a glue dot to the back of that and just press that into place just under the happy. Okay. And then we're going to add a little bit of sparkle. I'm not using any Wink of Stella on this card. Are you guys in shock? <laughs> I'm actually not using Wink of Stella at all today. Like, I think that's the first time ever that I have not used Wink on any of my projects in a video. So here I'm adding bling with some glitter enamel dots. These are in the annual catalog and they come in three color, four colors, gorgeous grape, melon mambo, great apple green, and coastal cabana. And it adds just the right amount of sparkle and just a little pop of color to those flowers. Aren't they cute? So, so cute. All right, that is project number one done. Now I'll just show you quickly what I did on the inside of my sample here. I just added a, a uh, whisper white panel and stamped another sentiment from the wonderful Easter set and then added some little stamped flowers and colored them to kind of match the ones that were on the front. Okay, so that is project number one. All done, so easy. All right, let's get rid of this one. We'll get rid of our little bumblebee. We don't need him and we'll get rid of the knots. Okay, moving on. Card number two is this one. Um, so cute. Now, this one could easily, if you are not in need of Easter cards, um, this one could so easily be changed to a baby card. It would be a perfect baby card, uh, gender neutral even, because it's not pink and, and blue. Um, so all you would need to do is switch out the Happy Easter for this Welcome to the World Little One sentiment, and it would be so cute. Thanks, Lee. Glad you like this one. So again, we are using some of that beautiful please just punch dsp okay so there is some of that same green that i cut the grass and that i used on the last card it's got the tulips on the back i've embossed this panel using the subtle embossing folder to add just a little bit of texture and it is cut to five and a quarter by four inches okay next i have a piece of mango melody ging excuse me, gingham. So this is from the um, 6x6 Brights Family Color Pack DSP that is from the annual catalog. And there is gingham in every color in that, right? So I've been sticking with the Brights for the last few weeks because I wanted to showcase that color pack. I love it. I love the, the colors in it. And uh, gingham for me equals Easter. Gingham and the basket weave. Those are my two go-tos for Easter. So you've probably seen me use gingham on Easter cards before, or spring theme cards anyway. And because I absolutely love this die cut and I can't seem to get enough, we're going to use um, some little scallop stitched edges to trim up the edges of our gingham like that. Okay, so to apply that, we are going to apply just a little bit of tape. So you can use snail for this as well. I just happen to have fast use here. And I'm going to glue this down so that it's straight. I'm using that stitch edge as a guide and I want to see that stitching, right? I don't want to cover it up. So I'm going to do the same on both ends. These little strips are cut using uh, one of the dies from the Be Mine Stitched dies. They are in the annual catalog as well. And I'm a little bit addicted to this die. If you've watched any of my recent videos, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> um, I'm kind of hooked on it. Um, I just think it's the cutest little little accent and it works so perfectly with the stitched scallop rectangles that are in the so sweetly stitched die set which is kind of my go-to die set right now <laughs> debbie i knew you would ask a question about me not using <laughs> wink Estella. i'm feeling fine i just yeah didn't use any wink i put it away and left it away for today
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and glue that down now onto our embossed panel. So we're going to add a little bit more adhesive to the back. And we're going to just pop that onto there in the middle-ish. So again, I'm using my grid lines. Whenever you are trying to get things straight, use your grid paper to your advantage. If you don't have grid paper, you need to get some. <laughs> Trust me. Um, if you are someone who struggles to get things straight, it will change your life. I guarantee you. Okay. All right. So we're going to add a little bit of ribbon. This is the crinkled seam binding ribbon that is part of the Peaceful Poppy Suite in the January to June mini. And I'm going to add just a glue dot to one end. I'm going to lay this across. It's going to go about a half inch up from the bottom. Okay. And trim off a little bit from the roll here. And again, another glue dot. And wrap it around. A lot of people have asked me why I do it this way and not just wrap it around and tie it. It's just to save ribbon, right? Why put ribbon all the way across the back of your card when nobody's going to see it, right? That's me. Little Miss Economized. <laughs> yes, Heather, I love that scalloped edge. What can I say? It's just so, so sweet. <laughs> I'm not in wink withdrawals, Debbie. No, I'm just, uh, yeah, just wasn't feeling it today, which is kind of weird. Okay, I forgot to tell you, this <laughs> card base is Calypso Coral. Okay, so Calypso Coral cardstock. It's five and a half by eight and a half inches, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we're gonna go ahead and fold that in half along our score line. And hi, Janine, hi, Laura, how are you guys doing? And we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive. And we're gonna pop that onto the front of our card, just like that. Okay, all right, so our card base is done. We're gonna set that aside for a little bit and we're gonna do some stamping. So here I have, speaking of, those adorable stitched rectangle dies. These are from the Stitch So Sweetly die set. They are currently not orderable, but they should be in, in the, by the middle of the month, okay, if you've been waiting on these. Um, these are my go-to. I love, love, love the detail on these, the stitch edge and the scallop, and see how perfectly they work together? That's why I'm so addicted to <laughs> that border die. Okay, so this is the second largest rectangle um, from that die set, and it is cut from Whisper White cardstock. And we're going to stamp our little lamb in memento black this time. So I'm just going to grab my little lammy here. And we're going to ink him up. And we're going to stamp them sort of to the right and up a little bit. Okay, I'm not going to put them right at the bottom. Now, I normally am always saying make sure you anchor your images. You don't want floating sheep, right? He's not going to float for long. We're going to anchor him with a stamp. So included in this stamp set, and I just realized this is really mounted crooked. We're going to see if we can straighten that up a little bit. Um, in this stamp set is this cute little grass stamp. Okay, so we are going to give some context or some grounding to our little sheep by stamping some of these grass images. Okay, just like that. And again, it still looks like he's floating, but don't worry. When we add some color, we're gonna fill in the grass. Okay, we're gonna do that right now. So here I have light granny apple green. Okay, this is Stampin' Blends. And I am going to just use this bottom little grass stamp image as my guide. And I'm going to continue that down to the bottom of my rectangle. Okay, and then I'm just gonna color across. So same thing here, I'm just gonna kinda continue that across. So it's almost like he's sitting on a little hill. Okay, that's what we're going for. And then we're gonna kinda come across here and we're going to color right up to the edge of our little lamb. And that is going to give the impression of him sitting on a little mound, a grassy little knoll in springtime green. I absolutely love Granny Apple Green for spring. It is so fresh and bright. Um, to me, it reminds me of the color of the grass, the first growth of grass in the spring, you know, before you cut the grass for the first time, that new growth. That is what this color reminds me of. I absolutely love it. Okay, so there he is, sitting on a little grassy hill. Isn't that cute? Easy way to ground your image, okay? If you, um, if you find when you stamp something you get it too high and you don't know what to do, um, just add a little bit of color and give him some grounding and now he looks like he's sitting on a hill. Okay, all right, so we're gonna finish coloring this little guy in. I've got my, what is this, light smoky slate. 
and I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadow. I'm gonna leave him mostly white, but I'm gonna add just a little bit of shadow sort of along the bottom, um, bottom of his legs, and sort of in here between his legs on his belly, just because that's where the shadow would be, right? If he's sitting, that's the way the light's going to hit, and he's gonna be in shadow there. Okay, and then I'm also gonna add a little bit um, just along sort of where his little tufts of fur are here. That's kind of all I did. I didn't do a ton of color on this guy um, because I didn't really want to color the whole thing. I wanted him to, him to be mostly white, okay? All right, so next I'm going to bring in my light basic black. Yes, there is such a thing as light black, also known as dark, dark gray, <laughs> okay? And I'm going to color um, his feet. So his little hooves here. with that dark, or sorry, light black. Okay, and the reason that I'm using the light black is because I still wanna see the detail on the stamp. If I use the dark black, I'm not gonna see that coming through, okay? This ends up when it dries um, as, a, as a pretty dark um, gray, okay? And then I'm gonna come back with my smoky slate again, and I'm going to color, wait, did I use, what did I use? No, I used the same shade, okay making myself second guessing myself here so i'm going to color his nose in the smoky slate and then i'm going to color his ears as well so he's going to have gray ears so so cute i love him and the adorable oh um now on my sample i did his little ribbon in um, blue, but that was when I was designing a card that was going to have a blue base. So I'm going to actually switch it up and I'm going to color his little bow in yellow. So this again is the dark so saffron. He's just going to coordinate with the rest of my card a little better. If he's got a yellow bow. Look at that. So, so cute. Okay, now we are going to do a little bit of, well, a little bit of stamp surgery here. Um, I know some of you get very anxious about cutting stamps, but it is totally okay. So remember that Happy Easter stamp that I used on the last card? It comes in the stamp set just like that, okay? It's straight across. Um, but for this card, I need it to be stacked. So I did a little stamp surgery and I literally cut Happy and Easter apart just like that, okay? You just need a sharp pair of scissors to do that. And then I mount Happy on one stamp on one block and Easter on another block. And I'm attempting to mount these straight. We shall see how straight they are when I go to stamp. And then I'm gonna stamp them individually. So I'm gonna stamp my happy. I'm gonna move this down a little bit so I can see. Hope you guys are okay with that. <laughs> uh, okay, let's make sure that is inky. And we're gonna stamp happy and hope that it's straight-ish, not bad. And then Easter, just like that. Okay, and you can see the way I had, to, had it mounted on the, the stamp before, if I want to do them back um, side to side like this, I just mount them together on the block. No big deal. So by cutting your stamps that way, it makes them a lot more versatile. Okay, so don't be afraid to cut your stamps. Okay, all right, so that is all the stamping on there. We're going to layer that rectangle on a granny apple green rectangle. So this has some weird dimensions because I wanted it to mat nicely on the white, okay? Let me see if I can remember. This is three and seven eighths by two and five eighths, I believe. Three and seven eighths by two and five eighths. I will double check that and I will post the measurements on um, the description of this video after, okay? So that is going to get glued right on there. So we're gonna add just a little bit of adhesive there. And we'll pop that on just like that. Okay, and then we're going to build some little flowers. So I have some more of the the punched flowers from the Please Just Punch DSP. And then I've also punched a couple of little um, leaf sprigs. These are from, punched with the, the leaf punch, okay, uh, which is in the annual catalog. And I just punched it from that same green cardstock or uh, green DSP that I used for the background. So I'm gonna take and trim these little leaves off of the sprig so that they're individual. I'm kind of folding them in the middle a little bit to give them a bit of dimension, adding a glue dot. And then I'm going to add a leaf to each one of my little punched flowers. 
And the nice thing about using the DSP is it's got that same sort of textured look, so it's going to work well with the punched flowers. Okay, I could have used just plain green cardstock, um, but it's not going to work quite as well. It's going to look quite a bit darker, more like the background here, and I wanted it to kind of blend with those. So just a little tip um, that using that punch works really, really well when you're punching from the same DSP pack. Okay, all right, so we'll get these guys all stuck down here. We got to fold that leaf. That's okay, we can do it after the fact. We'll fold this one. The reason I'm folding the leaves is just to give them a little bit of dimension so they curl a little bit. Oh, I just realized, am I missing a, I'm missing a flower. Where'd my other yellow flower go? Uh-oh, oh, there it is, it's on the floor. I dropped it, there we go. Okay, we'll add this guy. Hi, Deb, how are you? I hear it is freezing cold there. I am so sorry. I am so, so sorry. I don't think I could handle it if we had freezing temperatures and cold anymore. I am so done with all of that. Okay, so to put these onto my rectangle here, I'm just adding glue dots. Now I'm varying where I put them. I don't want them all to be on top. I kind of want to create a little bit of a uh, bouquet here. So I'm adding glue dots to the front and to the back. And again, we're gonna add another guy up here. And we'll add another one. Let's do this one on top. We'll do this one down here. And then one more yellow one right about here. Okay, so there is my little bouquet of flowers. And now that is going to get put onto the front of our card just with some dimensionals. So we will add those. I hope you are keeping warm. Debbie, I guess the only advantage <laughs> to um, this weather or that weather that you are having is that nobody can go anywhere anyway. So nobody has to be out in it. So I guess that's a good thing, right? <laughs> Does it make it a little bit easier to stay indoors in these days of social distancing? Um, I know when it's freezing cold, all I want to do is kind of hibernate, so it might make it a little bit easier. Okay, so then this is going to get glued on, centered onto our card. All right, that's over just a bit. <laughs> Move it over just a touch. Right about there is good. Just like that. Okay, and then we're going to add a couple of little pearls to the centers of our flowers, just to give them a little bit more interest. So, and I just think this is just so cute. This is why I think this would be an adorable baby card. It would be really, really cute. In fact, I might have to make another one as a baby card. Just because. There we go, and one more little pearl here. This guy, I hid the center behind, so that's okay. Not gonna worry about it, and there you go. Oh, one thing, forgot, forgot our bow lesson for today. Almost forgot our bow. All right, so we have some more of that crinkled seam binding. We are going to pinch it between our thumb and index finger, making two little bunny ears. Okay, two loops, making sure we keep our loops flat and not twisted. Left one is going to cross over the right and come around and through and pull. And then you're going to adjust the size of your loops. Okay, and this ribbon is so nice to work with because it holds its shape and you can pull a nice tight knot so the loops really stay put. Okay, so you want a cute little bow there. We'll trim off our tails. Get that out of the way. And then a glue dot. Fold that in half because it's a little bitty knot here. And that is going to tuck right on there like that. Isn't that cute? So, so, so cute. I love it. Love that little whammy. Okay, just to show you what I did on the inside of this one. Um, I just added, again, another sentiment from the stamp set and then some of the cute little flowers, again, echoing what I did on the front. Okay? All right. Next is my favorite project because it's so cute. <laughs> Where I'm going to show you how to make an adorable little treat holder. And I just need to get some stuff out of the way here. Organize myself. Get this out of here. And get this out of here. There we go. All right. Let me show you this cute little treat holder. 
So sadly, I have not been able to get to the store for obvious reasons um, to get any Easter candy yet. Well, first of all, I don't want to buy it too early because if I do, we'll eat it all <laughs> before Easter. Um, and secondly, I haven't been to the store in probably two weeks. So I'm trying to avoid um, going out. It does. It does increase the snacking dub. I totally agree. However, um, sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures and snacking is, is, is just fine in my book. Um, you find the ribbon to be staticky, do you, Debbie? I haven't had that problem with it. Um, I really, really like that ribbon. I've used it quite a bit. Um, I find it really versatile. Okay. So this cute little holder, it sits like this. Okay. It holds quite a bit. I think I had about 10 Hershey kisses in here. I was trying to see, you know, how much it would hold. Um, but it's meant to be like a little, egg with our little little chicky here so I'm going to show you how to put that together it is super simple and uses next to no supplies that's it <laughs> look at how little it uses okay so let me explain what I've got here see that's what I meant to do on the first card see that little grassy edge there yeah it's okay we improvised okay so I have two large ovals that are cut from Thick Whisper White cardstock. I use Thick Whisper White just to give this a little bit more um, strength, especially if you're going to put heavy chocolate and whatnot in it. Okay, so these are the la two largest plain ovals from the Layering Ovals dies. Okay, and then I have used um, some of the Celebration Vellum. This is the embossed vellum that is available until today. Oh, you are good thought, Deb. Good thought. Dry Alberta air, making it staticky. You are probably right. Okay, so I have cut um, two of the neck size down oval. So this is the second largest. See how those layer on there nicely? Um, two of the neck size down oval from the vellum. And yes, you can die cut the vellum. It doesn't squish the embossed pattern at all. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and glue these on. Now, I want to be careful where I glue my vellum, right? Because the glue will show through. So for now, I'm just going to glue sort of the bottom edge and I'm going to use tape. Okay, I find when I'm gluing vellum, if I use liquid glue, the vellum curls. Okay, so you want to use tape or um, some kind of like glue dots, any kind of non-liquid adhesive is preferable when you're gluing vellum. Okay, so I've got my adhesive down here. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. We're going to center that on there like that. Okay, all right, next I'm going to bring in my mini trimmer and I am going to cut, so this this circle is three and three quarter inches tall. I'm going to cut it back to three and one quarter. Whoops, three and, no, I lied. Is it three and a quarter? It's three and a half. <laughs> three and a half inches tall. I'm going to cut it back to three and a quarter. So I'm cutting off a quarter of an inch. And this is just to give me a flat bottom for my little treat box to sit. Okay, I can't have a rocky treat box. So I'm going to do the same thing on both of those pieces. So again, I'm going to three and a quarter and trimming that off okay so now I have two ovals that have the bottom trimmed off like that all right you with me I hope so oh Lisa that's okay for sure watch later okay so now I am going to cut my front one so all I'm going to do is take my paper snips and I'm going to cut a jagged edge just like it is a cracked egg and don't worry about trying to make it you know symmetrical or perfect just cut across your oval like that okay it's supposed to be a broken egg hi Jill thank you so much for sharing thanks for watching all right so now this is going to become the front of my little treat holder like that okay with me so far okay now this is going to form sort of the base the actual basket part so this is a piece of whisper white cardstock you can use thick i just use regular for this doesn't really matter for this part this is cut to four and a half by two so four and a half by two okay i've scored with the long side at the top at one and a half and at three and then i rotated 90 degrees and i scored at a half inch and at one and a half okay you with me all right, now I'm going to take my snips and I'm going to snip up these up to the long score lines here. So I'm just kind of cutting across here like this. Okay, so now I have these little flaps. I'm going to go ahead and fold along my score lines and use my bone folder to burnish them so they are nice and flat. Same thing on this side. 
Okay, and then we're gonna fold these guys in as well. Okay, so now can you see how that is going to form our little basket? Okay, so first I'm going to glue my front piece on. So what I wanna do is glue this little flap here to this bottom edge of my egg. Okay, just like that. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of liquid glue. Now I like using liquid glue for this because it gives me a little bit of wiggle time. It is strong enough for this. You do not need to use tear and tape. You certainly could. Um, but I, like I said, I had this thing loaded up with Hershey Kisses and it was plenty sturdy without, with just with using the liquid glue. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna flip this over. I'm going to bend my sides in and I'm going to glue each one. So this one, I wanna make sure that this edge does not extend past the edge of my egg, right? So I wanna make sure that that is tucked into there. So again, I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid glue here and I'm going to adhere it just like that, okay? There you go, okay? And then same thing on this side. I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid glue here And I'm gonna bend this in just like that. Okay, so we'll press that into place, give that a second to set up. And then we're gonna glue our back piece on. So the first thing I wanna do is glue these little corners down so that they're secure. Okay, so I wanna just kinda tack those into place. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of Tombow here. And we're gonna tack that down so that that's secure. Oh, see that one moved on the on me. That one got this side went out a little bit past the edge, but that's okay. That's the only downside to Tombow is because it does have time to set up. If you don't wait long enough, it will shift. See how that just is peeking out there a little bit? Not the end of the world. It's okay. We can live with it. All right. So then this guy is going to get glued on the back here. So the easiest way I found to do that, I'm going to put my glue on here, and then I'm just going. Whoops, not that way. This way, <laughs> I'm going to attach it. Okay. I want to see my nice blue embossed vellum there. So I'm going to add some Tombow on all three sides here. And I'm going to stand this up and then I'm just going to bring this up behind and we're going to adhere it just like that. Okay. And then again, you need to give it time to set up. There we go. Okay. And there's your little egg. Isn't that cute? So, so easy and fun and sweet. All right, now to decorate this, we are going to first of all add our little D, um, DSP grass here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue just along the front edge of this here. And we're gonna glue this guy on just like that. And again, I wanna make sure that the straight edge is flush with the bottom of my egg here. Okay, and then to trim that off, I'm just gonna flip this over and trim around here. So one. And two, there we go, there's our grass, okay? All right, now we need to stamp and fussy cut a little chicky. So I have just a scrap of white cardstock here and I've got my little chick stamp and I'm going to stamp him in basic gray, again, because I can. It's, it works just fine with the blends. So we're gonna stamp him on that white scrap and then we're gonna color. So this guy, I did do some shading. So I have my light and dark so saffron blends. I'm gonna start with my light. I'm gonna do his body and then I'm gonna do his head. I'm gonna do them in two stages. Make sure that is light, yes. <laughs> Second guessing myself here. So I'm coloring the entire body with the light, okay? So I'm just gonna color the whole thing, nice long strokes with the brush tip. Color them right across. Okay, just like that. And then I'm gonna come in with my dark and I'm gonna add some shadows. So kind of along under his wing here, kind of under the chin, along his little feathers, and then sort of around the bottom of him. Now this part we're not gonna see very much, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. But again, I'm gonna add just a little bit of shadow under his wing there. Okay, and then we're gonna come back in with the light and just blend that out. 
And it is a really subtle shading with between these the light and the dark on this one. You're not going to see a ton of difference, but you will once it all dries. You will see a little bit. So I'm not I'm taking care not to completely to go all the way across his belly because I want his belly to be a little bit lighter here. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to go on to the head. So I'm going to color again the whole thing with the light. We're going to go all the way across. I'm not take, being super careful here. I'm just filling in all that white space. I'm taking care not to color over his beak because we're going to do that in a different color. So I'll just come around here, color him all in. There he is. Okay. And then again, I'm going to come around sort of the sides of his head and around his chin with a bit of the dark, okay, to add a bit of shadow. And then again, I'm gonna come in with the light and blend that out. Oh, he's so cute. All right, to color his beak, I'm using the light pumpkin pie. So I'm just going to give him a little bit of an orange beak and I'm going to color just a little bit of this foot. I'm not going to worry about the other foot because that is going to get covered up when we tuck him in behind the grass. Okay. Isn't it cute? So, so cute. I know they would. I was thinking exactly that, Deb, that they would be really cute little play settings. But you know what? You could still do this for your family. I am going to make a nice Easter dinner. We are going to celebrate Easter because Jesus rose from the dead, regardless of whether or not we're allowed to get together as a family. So I am fully intending to celebrate Easter with my little family, the three of us and our three kitties. <laughs> And I'm going to try and make it as special as I can for our family. And I think it'll be a lovely celebration. And it just may not be a big one. And that's totally okay. So I am going to make these little guys. And I'm going to have them. We're going to get out the good china. And we're going to eat in the dining room. And we are going to celebrate. Because it is worth celebrating. So that's my plan. So yes, I'm going to make these as little place card or place settings. Place cards for my guys for Easter and they probably won't appreciate it, but I will. And that's okay. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> I will think they're cute and they'll appreciate what's in them. I'm sure <laughs> they will quite enjoy getting some little chocolates. Um, but yeah, we are going to have a nice fancy Easter dinner, just the three of us. So I hope you guys plan to do something special as well. It will certainly be a different Easter than what we are all used to. Okay, I'm not going to worry about trimming around that foot because that is going to get covered. So I'm just going to go right around the feathers here. And again, when you are fussy cutting, you are moving your paper rather than your scissors. Oh, you've been having afternoon tea. That's awesome, Deb. I'm so glad. That's lovely. Yeah, I have a beautiful set of china that doesn't see enough use. The, the problem is I would love to use them every day, but my guys that do the dishes after supper are not exactly gentle. Even our regular plates are getting chipped and cracked, so I don't really want to use my good china because it won't survive my rough boys. So we save the good china for for special occasions. Okay, so there is our little chicky. I'm just gonna clean that up because I don't like seeing that little bit of white there. There we go. So, so sweet. All right, now he is going to get tucked in behind our um, die cut grass here. We're just gonna kinda wedge him in there. Now I did put a little bit more glue on this one than I did before, but he's gonna kinda sit like that, okay? Now I did put dimensionals on him um, to pop him up a little bit. So we're gonna add a couple of dimensionals to the back of him, just like that. And we're going to tuck that in and pop him right in there. Isn't that sweet? So, so sweet. All right. Now we're going to add just a couple of little flowers here. So again, these are punched with the same, uh, from the same punch back. I am loving these, this, this DSP. I'm going to be sad to see it go. Um, I have some that are punched from the edge. I'm going to use them as well. You don't have to toss those out. I'm going to add this little guy in behind with a glue dot. So we're just going to add this one here 
just like that, peeking out from behind our little chicky. And we'll add another one back here. Just like that. Okay, now remember how we only added our adhesive to the bottom of the vellum? So now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna tuck in a glue dot here um, where it's coming away, okay? Because now that I know where I can hide the adhesive, I can go ahead and add more. So I'm just gonna add a glue dot there and that's gonna keep that nice and secure, okay? All right, so now our last little bit is to stamp our little sentiment. So this one says, have a wonderful Easter. And we are going to stamp it again in the basic gray. So this little strip is a half inch strip, just some scrap. And, but it makes, they make perfect little banners, these little, little strips. Okay, so we've stamped that. And then again, I'm gonna do my tailored tag trick and punch the ends into a banner. So we'll just back that off a little bit and go one there and one there. Okay. And then we're gonna add a couple of little flowers. So this one was punched from the edge of the DSP. So we're gonna hide that straight edge in behind and no one will ever know that that's not a whole flower. See how, it's e how easy to use to, is to use up those little bits? And we're gonna tuck this one in here, just like that. And then that's gonna go across on a couple of dimensionals. So we'll just add a couple of dimensionals to the center of our little banner. And we'll get rid of our backings and just pop that on just like that. And there he is. Isn't he cute? So, so cute. The cool thing is that the DSP or the, sorry, this um, vellum comes in a bunch of different colors. So you could do a bunch of different colored eggs. Isn't that sweet? I love this DSP too, Lee. It's so, it makes me happy. I think I, everybody is ready for spring around here. And I think that's why I've just been gravitating to it for the last little bit. Okay, you guys, let me pull in our, all of our projects again. So we have one, two, and three cute little Easter projects for you. All right, I hope you enjoyed those. I'm gonna be back on Friday with some more Easter projects. I don't know yet what they're gonna be. I have one really cute little treat holder design and I will show you where it is. Here it is. Look at this little guy. I'm going to show you how to make this guy on Friday. Is he not? That's just the cutest little bunny. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to make that on Friday. Um, I'll be live on Friday evening at 730. We're going to do this and I don't know what else. Whatever I come up with. <laughs> I'm running a little behind this week. We've had um, some sick kitties that we've been dealing with. And uh, so I'm a little behind on my plans for my videos this week. But I'll have something for you. Okay. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed these projects. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Um, I hope you guys in Calgary stay warm. I feel so bad that it's so cold there. And here, here's hoping spring arrives soon. Okay. Thanks, everyone. And I will see you back here on Friday at 730 for another episode. Have a great week. Bye bye.